Okay, good morning. How's everyone doing so far this week? Good? Me too, me too. Welcome uh, to the session today. My name is David Stout. I am a developer evangelist with Cisco DevNet. Um, my job and uh, the colleagues uh, that I have uh, in DevNet and on the developer evangelist team uh, work with third-party developers uh, to help them essentially uh, consume our APIs to integrate their applications with our platforms, help them make successful, help them uh, be successful uh, via things like sample code, training sessions, um, <clears throat> learning labs, uh, events like this. We travel around the world talking to developers uh, where they live uh, to try to you know, get them excited about Cisco APIs and technologies, the things that they can do, and to help and encourage them to, to integrate with us. <clears throat> It's a pretty open program, and I've uh, uh, been doing this for uh, over 15 years and still, still like going into work every day. <clears throat> so in this session today, we'll be talking uh, about something that uh, hasn't even been released yet. It's pretty exciting, um, which is Spark Voice and Video SDK. Uh, so if you've uh, <clears throat> caught anything about Spark APIs this week, What you can build now is essentially all about messaging. All right, I think it's my browser here. Yeah, if, uh, if you can help me out, it's a little shaky there. Uh, it's about messaging. So uh, applications that can manipulate Spark rooms, create teams, put people into teams, put people into rooms, uh, send messages to people, receive uh, webhook uh, notifications from people uh, to do interactive things like uh, chatbots, <coughs> um, DevOps, chat ops uh, kind of solutions. Uh, just everything to do with messaging uh, using the persistent chat platform of Spark. So uh, when I first was introduced to Spark, I already had a favorite messaging platform. Um, I was also using Jabber. Uh, I was like, hmm, more messaging, cool. So it, it took me a while to get used to it. And uh, it's grown on me quite a bit. Uh, the, the pace of development is very rapid with the product itself and uh, as well with the APIs. Uh, so, pretty much on a weekly basis, uh, monthly basis, uh, very, very rapidly, uh, expansions to this API come out. Um, I have a session later this afternoon to talk about some of the uh, new things that are occurring just in the messaging part of the API. Um, it's a REST-based API. So if you are familiar with REST, uh, these are web API calls that can be made essentially from any platform. So whether it's PC, mobile, IoT devices, um, phones, <clears throat> essentially anything that connects to the network and can be programmed can interact uh, with Spark via messaging. It has webhooks for notifications, bots and chat bots are some of the cool things that you can build uh, as well as integration applications. If you want to get uh, involved in developing to the current set of uh, capabilities, uh, just go to developer.ciscospark.com. Uh, has everything there. Uh, there's a support option with 24-hour Spark-based support, very responsive. Um, and uh, frankly, for me, some of the best documentation that I've seen as a developer for 15, I don't know, 25 years, very easy to understand. Um, all the API references are here. Uh, you can see the individual requests uh, for manipulating people and rooms, uh, sending messages, all that good stuff. Uh, including some SDKs down here at the bottom. And we'll get into that in a little bit more in a second. So what can you build with this stuff? Well, all kinds, all kinds of things. If you want to get a taste, go visit uh, the Spark Depot. This is at depot.cisco.com, and uh, it's really a feature, uh, a place to feature third-party integrations and bots and other applications that have already been built for Cisco Spark. A lot of these things are uh, absolutely free to use. I mean, you can go in here um, and uh, you know, 
drop the gift bot into your room, start making funny pictures and uh, making everyone laugh. Uh, there are integrations to Box, Dropbox, GitHub. Um, this page has expanded uh, almost four times in the, uh, since I've last looked at it. Um, there's a lot of inspiration here if you are a developer or uh, you have an in-house development staff that can handle some simple REST APIs uh, of what can be done. Or if you want to just take these things and run with them, use them today, that's fine too. So we're not here today to talk about messaging necessarily. <coughs> there, uh, as I mentioned, uh, Spark does have some native language SDKs. If you don't want to work with straight REST, which frankly is pretty easy, uh, we do have a packaged SDK for Java. So your enterprise Java developers uh, will be all warm and fuzzy about that. We also have a JavaScript library. So this is open source. It's, you can download it through NPM, keep it updated. There's, uh, it's continually being developed. Um, and this provides a nice JavaScript wrapper uh, that makes it very easy to you know, uh, create a Cisco Spark object, create some rooms, uh, send a message you know, in a few lines of code, right? Handy. Interesting, this uh, JavaScript library works uh, both in the browser and as a Node.js uh, server side. So if you go in and look at the documentation for that JavaScript API and start poking around, this, this surprised me a couple months ago I saw this come up. Placing a call. All right. What's that all about? Well, as you might have suspected from the title of this session, voice and video is now part of this SDK. It's in beta format, but as we'll see, most of the code is out there. You may or may not get it running on any given day at this point. The commits are happening fast and furious as we uh, move towards the release. Uh, but there's a lot of stuff there that you can check out, uh, start uh, experimenting with, um, and just thinking about how you might uh, use something like this. So we're on track to deliver widgets for messaging, voice, and video. Um, these are little snippets of JavaScript and HTML, a few lines of code right? that you can drop into a web-based application and embed a little piece of Spark. right? So the Spark meeting uh, chat, uh, chat room UI, fully functional. Spark video and voice capability, all the high quality WebRTC-based uh, video goodness that connects to Spark boards and all that good stuff. Uh, coming in really easy to embed JavaScript widgets. We also have full-fledged SDKs for uh, Node.js and browsers uh, and for iOS as well that let you uh, really take full control <coughs> of the voice and video capabilities um, of Spark inside your own applications. So what can you do with this kind of stuff? Well, a lot. I love these mock-ups. I've been looking at these embedding voice and video and, and into everything mock-ups for, for a couple of years now, uh, ever since uh, I started supporting jo uh, Jabber. And they're really cool. But this is a real application. This is a partner that uh, engaged early with the Spark SDK. Um, I, I'm not sure that uh, I can tell you their name. You might be able to figure it out if you read the fine print. Uh, but this is, uh, I believe, a, a medical kind of health uh, oriented application uh, that has you know, a list of experts that you can uh, search from. Uh, you can write inside the video UI, do voice, uh, and high quality Spark based video uh, embedded into an application. So this is cool. This is another partner, Redbooth, who's a little further along, I think, uh, or we're pretty far along. This is uh, a project management suite, as I understand it. So uh, we have a lot of project managers in DevNet. Bless their soul, they keep me uh, very busy and on my toes. Uh, but they create a lot of projects. They manage a lot of teams. And they use Spark constantly. Every, every day I have 10 more Spark rooms that they add me to. Um, a solution like this, uh, a project management application, can really tightly integrate with Spark capabilities. So that if you go into the project management tool and create a new project, add some people in there, it can automatically create a new Spark team. It can automatically populate that with the people that are part of the project. Um, you can share files in there. 
Uh, you can do automated stuff. So when stuff is late, something's going over a target on a deadline, uh, you know, uh, automated messages can be put into the room. And it's all built into the same application, right? So this is a browser-based uh, uh, app, as I understand it. Voice and video meeting, chat, all built right in. So as a developer, you have a lot of capability to uh, really embed some high-quality collaboration tools in any UI that you can think of. So let's take a look at some of this stuff in operation. I'm just going to show you the simple versions at first. So this is a web page hosted on my local, web, local machine. Not much to it. Empty web page. A few lines of code we'll look at in a second. Hopefully, it'll connect uh, to Spark using uh, one of my accounts. And if I'm really lucky, I'll be able to show you some chatting going on there. But if we look at the source code for this, there it goes. That's it. Let's look at the rendering. Right, so this is an existing chat room. All my persistent chat history is right in there. It's rendering a preview of a document that was shared to me. I can chat back and forth in there. I just drop this in to a simple empty web page with that many lines of code. Pretty cool. Let's look at it in a little more dressed up fashion. Some designers in JavaScript and CSS, right? Uh, so for example, say you're a coffee shop. You want to offer online chat support with your contact page. I'm not sure you would necessarily do this in the real world. I'm going to type my email address in here. Same thing happens. <clears throat> you can define, essentially, the container, the rectangle where this uh, UI is going to be rendered. It uh, automatically resizes itself. Uh, all the Spark, uh, JavaScript, uh, WebRTC, uh, all that good stuff is downloaded from uh, a global content delivery network. So you don't even have to host this widget code or, or maintain it or update it or anything like that. Any new features that we add to Spark as we roll in a continuous integration fashion automatically show up to the, to the customers that you uh, have using for this. Here's a simple video calling application. Again, empty web page for the most part. We have some custom buttons here, right? So you can create your own UI. Imagine something prettier than what I did there. <laughs> Again, you can call. Let's try calling my mobile here. All right, so this uses WebRTC, no plugins. If you're using the Jabber SDK and you're managing plugins, it's kind of a pain. This uses modern WebRTC browser technology for all the high quality, secure voice and video. This is why we've had people on the WebRTC standards boards for a decade. So I actually have uh, the full Spark client running in the background there. Not sure what will happen if I answer it. Um, I was expecting it to ring on my phone here. Let's try a call in the other direction. <clears throat> so if you like, if you enable the options, if you handle the events, you can do inbound and outbound calling. All right, so we've got a pop-up UI here. I can, an again, answer the call. Not so much luck. <laughs> I 
That's a little better. Okay. Well, I got one way video. Very good. So again, we're rendering a custom UI down there that gives me a hang up button. Pretty cool. <clears throat> so if you're a developer, <clears throat> uh, you might be asking yourself, how can I do that? What do I need to learn? What are the tools? The good news is, uh, especially for Spark widgets, Essentially, you need to just copy and paste this code right here. If you notice, uh, there's some CSS that gets, gets pulled down uh, that kind of styles the UI. I don't know if it's supported right now, but, uh, but if, you, if you wanted to hack on that, you might be able to give it a little different look and feel. I don't know. Um, but this is the key here, this bundle.js. This is actually hosted on a global uh, content delivery network. So it downloads that from uh, essentially the Spark Cloud every time you run it. So you always have the latest uh, updates, security updates. Uh, the newest features are all already built in there. You can also download the SDK and build that bundle yourself and host it locally. So if you want to make sure you always have an exact version that you can manage and test completely, that's an option as well. <coughs> so that kind of gives us the code. <coughs> this down here is the container. I just make a simple div container. And there's some secrets that I need to put in there. This is the destination that we want this chat. Uh, we're using the chat uh, message meet widget right here. This is the destination of that meet message. Now, this is hard coded in this example, but you could certainly dynamically, uh, through JavaScript, uh, populate that based on selections that the user makes in the application. So let's see how that works in practice. This is a fake banking application that I use uh, for a lot of demos. Doesn't look too horrible. It looked better about five years ago. Um, but what I've done is enabled this button right here to pop a window with the uh, Cisco Spark messaging application uh, hosted right inside there. So this is fully functioning. The users can upload files from their desktop if they want to. You can send them files that they can then download. Um, if I was a little more clever, this would be uh, a JavaScript div that floated above and uh, stayed inside the window. But uh, I didn't have time to, to finish that up this morning. So that's cool. How hard is that to do? Here's the same page. Click the button, nothing happens. So, right? So, I took all of the code. There's nothing in there that has anything to do with Spark right now. One thing I did is I took the sample script, the sample widget code that I showed you earlier, and I just pasted that into an HTML file. All right, I customized it with the user token of the person I wanted to make a call or I wanted to initiate the message from. And I put, in my, I put my email address in there because that's who I wanted to set the call up with. And again, those can be dynamic. But I'm going to go in here, in here and inject a little bit of JavaScript right into this page. So in the onClick met method, Let's see if I can make that a little bit bigger. No. One more time. OK. What I'm going to do? is use some JavaScript. I'm going to open a window. The URL for that window is going to be that HTML snippet. What did I call it? <laughs> Spark chat HTML. Uh, 
I'm going to make that about 500 pixels high, make it about 400 pixels wide. Get my parentheses right. Well, let's see what happens here. Boom. I just Spark enabled this website with a little snippet of code. So if you're div I think your developers can handle this. Uh, note there are more capabilities than this. I believe there are JavaScript events and other things that can let you interact with this widget a little bit to make it a little more, dy more dynamic and interesting and useful. Uh, but I think it's a pretty cool example uh, showing you how that you can embed uh, these real, real, really best of breed collaboration tools in your applications. <clears throat> so that's the widget. That's cool. The SDK itself, which is the full featured uh, voice and video SDK that lets you essentially build a full soft phone into your application. Uh, on iOS, uh, Android is under development uh, for later on, um, but uh, the JavaScript version as well is there. Lets you, you know, not just constrain uh, the Spark voice or video to uh, a widget in a rectangle, uh, but essentially put it and do anything with it. Uh, so you can have uh, uh, buttons or interactions that launch calls, hang up calls, transfer calls, uh, auto all automated uh, fully into your uh, application. So uh, the SDK itself, if you go look at it, and I'll show you the code base here in a second, uses you know, this cutting edge stuff. Um, I, after I kind of uh, did a crash course in the SDK, trying to get it built and running and testing it in preparation for this, uh, I think I added like 15% to my resume of, uh, of uh, web and development uh, acronyms. Uh, so there's a lot of stuff in there. Uh, currently, if you go and mess with it, you're going to need to know it a little bit about packing JavaScript and Node.js and things like that. Um, as I understand it, there's a lot of effort uh, as we um, move towards release to make this easier to use. So expect that to happen. But even now, once you get everything packaged up, once you get that bundle JS linked to your application, it's all really gravy. <coughs> We're going to, you know, sparkphone.dial. Here's who we want to dial, Alice at example.com. We're handling incoming media, connecting that up uh, to elements on the page uh, so that incoming uh, video gets rendered where we want it inside the UI. Uh, we're muting and enabling video. Uh, all really, to under really easy to understand and use JavaScript is, is available, to, available to you once that JavaScript SDK gets in there. So as I mentioned, there's an iOS SDK that will also ship at, at, at or about the same time. Uh, if you're a Swift, Swift guy, you know what that means. I have no clue. I have some clue. It's not, not that easy, not that difficult to understand. Cool. So you said it wasn't released yet. But apparently, the SDK is out there. That's correct. If you go to Spark for developers, developer.ciscospark.com, under documentation and under the SDKs. You can download and keep up to date as we make uh, additions to the SDK right with us, right? So um, you can go and look at the online documentation. And in fact, all of the source code is being hosted on GitHub. So this is the complete project. All of that high-tech HTML, uh, JavaScript, Node.js, Webpack, um, <coughs> WebRTC, it's all being developed open source. That's, that's crazy to me. I've been a big open source fan um, working for Cisco, especially when I first joined. Uh, it was a little iffy. Uh, but this is, this is fantastic. I mean, if, uh, if you want to go in and, and make this better, you can actually contribute code that we'll uh, take a look at 
Um, but uh, right now you can go and get the, the meeting widget. I think the voice widget is coming soon. Uh, the voice and video SDK capabilities are in there, et cetera. So great. <clears throat> the code is open source. It's being developed. You can go and get it now. Uh, if you come and ask us nicely at this URL right here for SDK access, we'll actually put, it, put you in a Spark room uh, and give you a little bit of developer support. We welcome uh, your feedback there. Definitely want to know how you guys are getting along as you develop with this, what issues you're running into, how we can make this a better SDK, uh, both now, uh, before it's launched, and afterwards. So when will this be available? And don't say soon. Well, soon. <laughs> Just got an update from uh, Olivier Profit, who's the product manager for this SDK, uh, a few days ago that uh, what I showed you today will be available uh, in April of this year, as far as we know. Very soon. Um, so uh, if you're ready, I think he has some cool mobile-based versions of uh, the samples that he's going to show you, and maybe talk a little bit more about the roadmap and if you guys have any questions. Hi, everyone. So yeah, I'm uh, Olivier Profi, product manager for the Spark SDK. And um, yeah, I can share the roadmap as well. And before the roadmap, I can show, so David, just show you how the code, how the iOS SDK is, is built. And, and just to, to make it more real, here is a, a demo. So let's imagine that you, you are a, con a consumer and you want to reach your, your bank. And as a consumer, you would like to have more details around your banking accounts. And, uh, and maybe for small amounts of money, just chat or message is, is fine. But uh, if you want to buy a house, you want to loan a few thousands of, uh, of euros, uh, or even hundreds of thousands of euros, maybe you would like to reach your expert, your bank expert over video. Um, and so basically, you, here you, you check your, your accounts, and then you go on the service tabs, and, and you will look for the service you would like to, to reach. So as soon as you, you select like mortgage, you want to, to sign a new uh, mortgage uh, contract, then you will have this option of calling a video expert, and hopefully he, he will be available. So I've got another endpoints here. And when you press the call, basically, it will consume the Spark SDK, the iOS Spark SDK, written in Swift. So natively written on the iOS language. And if you place the call, it will, as you would expect, it will call the remote uh, expert, the remote expert agent, which can be over Spark. So I can answer my phone and hopefully the video will come up. So at the end, as a remote expert agent, it could be any kind of Spark uh, client, Spark endpoints, Cisco endpoints, or even third-party SIP compliant endpoints. Since the, the Spark cloud is capable of dialing any SIP address, any external SIP address, so it can reach. So now the video come up, as you could expect. Um, you, could, you could reach a contact center as well, a Cisco contact center for sure, but even third-party contact center over, over SIP. Um, and as you could expect, you've got the video, you could uh, make some more fancy stuff, you could resize the video, the local video, the remote video, you could mute your local or your remote uh, audio as well, you could switch the camera. So depending, depending on the use case, uh, you may change the UI um, because it's an SDK, so you can change the buttons, you can change the landscape format, you can change the, the, the size of the, of the pictures. 
And, and maybe you would prefer to have some more context. You could have your financial details on top of the video. So you could imagine whatever you, you want, depending on your uh, use case. But wh what is cool with this SDK is that even when I'm dropping the call, I'm still in the bank context. So that's the main difference between the Spark SDK and the third party video app like FaceTime or whatever consumer video app is that you, you stay inside your business application. So you keep your users. They are still in the banking application. And so for instance here, I stay in the financial context. I can sign my new mortgage uh, contract. And when I'm done, I just press done. And the signature will be sent to the agent. So the agent will receive the signature over Spark. And basically, the full business flow of creating a new account or creating a new mortgage contract is done over, over video. So that's the main difference between the Spark SDK and, as I said, a third party video application. You, you keep the context, you keep the user inside the context. So that was about the, the demo. Um, maybe you've got some questions. So around the roadmap, I can switch back in the, on the laptop. So uh, yeah, you've got a question. Let me come. I cannot. Yeah, so the question is, I understood well, is, um, is the caller ID or the callee ID is operating to, um, to the agent? Yeah, so the, the remote agent, let's say the banking application agent, will receive an incoming call from this consumer, and this consumer uh, could publish his caller ID. So it could be uh, my first name, last name, it could be my email. Yeah. So the question now is, uh, does the consumer side, so the consumer of the bank, does he need a Spark account? The answer is yes or no. So today, yes. Tomorrow, no. So we will launch another version where non-subscriber users will be able to consume it without uh, basically using a Spark client. But you can start with the M0 license, meaning the free license. It will work as well. So in terms of roadmap, everything will happen on April. Audio, video, and the messaging widget that David uh, showed. Yeah, another question, if we've got a few minutes, yeah. Yeah, so the question is about the screen sharing. So screen sharing is coming as well in a very limited um, capability, meaning that the iOS SDK or the JavaScript SDK is capable of receiving the screen sharing, but not sending. And, and later this year, we will add the sending capability. So receiving from another endpoint, so like your DX80 or a telepresence unit or a Spark client can send to the SDK, and the SDK is capable of rendering it on your website or your iOS application. Okay. <clears throat> Thanks, Olivier. Uh, so that pretty much brings us to uh, the conclusion of the session. Um, absolutely. If you have questions uh, later on, uh, feel free to join us on Spark. Uh, there's a Spark room dedicated just for this session that will be available, uh, looks like, two, for two weeks um, after this, and, and I'll be in there later. Uh, so if you have questions or you go, in, go back and talk to your developers about this and they have questions, um, I'll be in there. Uh, Olivier, I think you're in there as well. Uh, feel free to, to hit us up, and uh, we'll see uh, what we can do to answer you. Perfect. Already open. So I would encourage you to check out the full 90-minute session that Olivier is presenting uh, tomorrow uh, at 11.30. <clears throat> Here is uh, the session ID if you want uh, a full demonstration or full discussion of use cases, um, 
uh, partners that are already using this, uh, just more detail uh, about the sort of the business uh, end uh, of the Spark Voice and Video SDK, uh, come join us there. Complete your session evaluation, and thank you very much.